Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today I'm going to be doing a sort of little practical demonstration on how a VRM runs. Because a friend of mine, uh, who's the, I think he's the number one overclocker for Finland right now, uh, he had a HD7970, really, really nice card, clocked really, really high, and uh, he tried to add some extra capacitors onto the, onto the card for the V-Core to try get the, you know, get better voltage, uh, like flatter voltage, more stable voltage for the GPU core. And uh, so he added the capacitors, but he added them in the wrong place and all the capacitors blew up and it destroyed three high side MOSFETs. And as a knock on effect, I think it also destroyed his entire, just all of the VRAM on the card. So I figured I would show you why that happened as well as show you some things about how VRMs work. So yeah um let's get on with it ta-da so this is the setup for testing today um my miserable multimeter uh my budget oscilloscope it does go up to two mega uh i do believe it goes up to two megahertz bandwidth so it can check the several hundred kilohertz pwm signals that you know volt uh voltage like vrms run on so that's why I need an oscilloscope, because if we use the multimeter, you're going to see why it was possible for my friend to screw up that capacitor mod so badly. Um, so, yeah. So oscilloscope, we'll use that. And for the VRM, here we have the RX480 reference PCB VRM. Um, you know, no card on the other end of it any longer. Uh, it does have voltage control by way of potentiometer. And yeah, um, this runs, it's hot wired to basically run off of 12 volts and 3.3 volts. Um, I've replaced the phase drive, like the, the gate drive of the MOSFETs right now is, uh, they're driven with 12 volts instead of, I think the reference cards run on, on seven volts phase drive, uh, like gate drive. And the thing about that is this gets hot even with no load on it, just because I'm pushing so much more power into switching the MOSFETs on and off. Anyway, um, that's not what we're here to talk about, about building your own e-power. Uh, this is more about uh, showing you how this, uh, like, some of the traps with a VRM and a, and a multimeter that you can run into. So let's get this thing running. I have it hooked up to my Antec HCP 1200 watt power supply just off the SATA connector. It is wired that this six pin is not actually necessary for it to function. Uh, also, one of the things I realized is I forgot to actually put a input filtering uh, choke on this thing. So right now, as it is, um, there's no filtering on it, which basically means you wouldn't really want to run this because it puts unnecessarily, uh, like it puts more stress on your power supply than is absolutely necessary. So in the future, I'll probably be changing the 12 volt power input for this thing to like, I'll be adding this choke here, um, which probably isn't the right size. But it's the only, like, it's something, and it's the only choke I have. So these are the only spare chokes I have right now. So at least some kind of filtering. Now then, let's get this thing fired up. And there we go. Now it is running. Uh, you can't hear it, but it is certainly running. And I will show you using the multimeter right now. So voltage. And we'll take ground here. And then off of the capacitor bank on the output side, we will go there as you can clearly see we are getting 1.14 volts right now if i tweak the output voltage the hell this thing has some really weird noises that it occasionally puts out anyway it's probably not going to burn my house down yet <laughs> Um, so if we check output voltage now, we can see it's at 1.17. Now it's at, and I think it turned off. Let's see. I'll reboot it. This thing is just weird, misbehaving all the time. I need to still finish it off, but yeah. So now we're getting 1.25 volts. So voltage control is working. Um... For some ungodly reason, this thing has a lot of random issues when running. Probably because it's just like, you know, my, my first attempt at seriously doing a knee power and that sucks. Um, anyway, uh, 
So right now it's putting out 1.14 volts. And the interesting thing is, so here we have the chokes, right? And so the actual MOSFETs are behind those chokes. So this is the high side MOSFET. And I'll just measure off of the high side MOSFET because these are easier to measure off of. But if we measure the voltage coming off of the high side fats, you will notice uh, something rather disturbing with the multimeter. So let's go there. Still reading 1.14 volts, except I can guarantee you we're not actually running 1.14 volts. Uh, that MOSFET right there is outputting a square wave that peaks in the 12 volts. But we're reading 1.14 anyway. And vCore actually reads the same voltage. So you would assume that if you put a 2.5 volt capacitor um, in that area, because it reads 1.14 volts, you'd be fine, right? The multimeter says it's 1.14 volts. Your capacitor won't blow up except it will. And this is why we have the oscilloscope here. Um, and the thing is, basically any area behind the chokes is very likely to have this issue. So hopefully, what mode is this in? Automatic voltage, Vmax, and I just need to, nope, just need to get the time under control. Okay, wait, we need higher voltage resolution. I think four volts should do it. And there, and actually, no, I need to be able to control time there. So now if we stab one of these, we can see, well, you can't. So let me just quickly tweak the exposure. Where's my mouse? Da -da. There we go. You can sort of, ah, yeah. Okay. So now if I measure from that same point, which you no longer can see, you can see we get these spikes and you can't read it but it certainly says it 12 point you can see that those spikes so the it's currently in maximum voltage mode and we can see that our maximum voltage in that area is 12.55 volts which is why um if you were to put capacitors over there they would blow up because they basically get a spike of 12 volts and that's actually the pwm waveform right there uh, that is used to convert 12 volts into the lower voltage. And as you can see, it's a bit of a mess. Actually, let's see if I can get the... There we go. So that's 5 milliseconds. Um, and if we look at a different phase, some of these phases aren't running properly at all. Some of them are running really, really well. Like this one's pretty clean. I think this one's broken. Yeah, th this one's a mess. These phases down here at the very bottom of the aren't even running at all. Um, that's reading 1.36 volts. Those phases aren't currently powered on. So basically what happens is because all the chokes are in parallel on the V-core side, um, you have 12 volts comes in, um, you know, you, you'll have like 12 volts comes in through one of the phases, the choke converts it down into V-core, and then that V-core will actually travel backwards through the chokes that aren't getting 12 volts on the side. If we were to get these two phases down here to turn on, like just enabled them, then they would actually push 12 volts forward and basically the chokes force the current to go in one direction. So you can't quickly reverse it. Now, if we measure on the output side, we can see that V-core is according to this again, you know, uh, output side, we're reading a flat line. Input side, we get our little spiky waveform and it, it varies from phase to phase because I've screwed up some of the controls on this volt, uh, VRM here, but yeah. So, and you'll actually see the same kind of thing from the back of the board where I think there's more problems than on the front of the board. But uh, if we go off the choke of a phase, we can actually see that as well, right? That's, that's a choke that I'm measuring right now. There, that point right there so that's a choke and we can see that pwm again so there so that's why you and and if we measure off of those off of the that leg of the choke which i just showed the pwm waveform off of with the multimeter right you're gonna see 1.14 how very very not useful <laughs> And basically, this is why, um, and I think the VRM just shut down. Nope, it's still running. Um, so yeah, that that is a kind of a problem. And to make things worse, if we power the VRM off, right, the resistance across a choke 
So I actually have a choke here to demonstrate with. Let's crank up the gain a bit. That's a bit too much, I'd say. Um, so I have a choke here. As you can clearly see, it's just a bit of wire inside a ferrite. Uh, well, it might not necessarily be ferrite, but it, uh, generally the core will be iron or some kind of other iron ferrite mixture, uh, powdered and then sintered. Um, and the reason why it's a powdered material, so you can actually see, this is sort of see, no, okay, wait, I need to give you autofocus. There we go. So there you can sort of see that this is not like a, you know, metal that has been like liquid. It's it's a sort of powdery material that's been solidified. Anyway, um, if you try to measure the resistance across one of these, which let's put this into resistance mode, you'll get zero. So if you try to figure out if you're on the output side of the of a choke or the input side of a choke with a multimeter, you basically have no chance, which uh, my recommendation to solve that, like generally you can just look at how the VRM is arranged. Like we have MOSFETs here, like with this one, we have high side fat, low side fat, choke, capacitors. So logically, um, this side, this leg right here is going to be uh, input side of the choke. This leg right here, right? The, the forward legs will therefore be V core. And we don't have to worry about the resistance. But if for some reason all of your choke legs are next to each other, like there's no obvious separation which which one is closer to 12 volts and which one is further from 12 volts, then your best bet is to just not solder across, like just avoid the chokes completely and follow your capacitors for capacitor modding. Because if otherwise, like you could very easily end up hooking up to the PWM, like the PW, you know, the chopped up 12 volts before it goes through the choke. And if you hook up a 12, a 2.5 volt capacitor to 12 volts straight, it's gonna blow up the capacitor. The other issue is it will really quickly overload your high side MOSFETs because just it, it will destroy the VRM. So you really, really, really don't want to hook anything up to the input side of a choke because if you do, pretty much whatever you put there will die. Um, unless it's like a resistor or something, but really if you're putting capacitors somewhere, do not put them on the input side of a choke because if they're on the like phase portion of your VRM, then they will overload the high side fat, which, you know, that, that, that's just awful. So yeah, that's, um, it sort of shows you how a VRM runs. Why is there, where did this come from? There we go, dust. Um, yeah, so that just sort of, sort of shows you how a, how a VRM runs um, and what to watch out for with capacitor mod. Uh, like if you're, if you're planning to add capacitors to a VRM, just like don't uh, just use existing capacitors for reference. Um, if you see 2.5 volt capacitors somewhere, it's a safe bet to put more 2.5 volt capacitors off the back of them. If you're soldering onto something that isn't a 2.5 volt capacitor, uh, you better like, you better know what the hell you're doing. Otherwise you're at a uh, very high risk of hooking up to something that's going to blow the capacitor to bits uh, and then cause further damage when that occurs. So yeah, um, that's sort of that for uh, this video. And there we go. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe. I hope you found this, you know, uh, educational to some extent and if you didn't like if you have any more questions or anything you can leave a comment down below um, if you would like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking then uh, I do have a patreon and a PayPal you can find them uh, find links to both down in the description below thank you for watching and see you next time where's the mouse now